All right, Axis and Allies, 1942 Second Edition. So today I'm just going to be going over offshore bombardment and just explaining a couple things about it and how it works. Uh, and then, yeah, that's about it. My voice is still a little bit sick-ish, uh, so bear with me. Hopefully you can still understand me. And so basically the way off offshore bombardment work is during an amphibious assault. Uh, so we have Gibraltar. And we have uh, the German Navy here, some of it anyways. Uh, so we have a cruiser, which is able to bombard. Battleships are also able to bombard. Uh, and so if you load them on to Gibraltar, you can bring in that battleship in if you want. And uh, the way it works is before any of the combat has started, the bombardment will take place. Uh, so it'll be one rolling. Uh, so let's jump on over here. So a cruiser attacks at a three, so let's roll a three. Let's see if we get a hit. Nope, that's a miss. Uh, that's like really bad too. And then we have the battleship. And that was a hit. So this would be taken one hint. So maybe infantry. The infantry still has a chance to defend now, uh, but the bombardment is done. And now combat resumes uh, with uh, the tank and... Uh, the infantry, so you can just roll that out. Infantry, tank, all oh, both missed. And so that infantry would get a chance to defend now. Nope, it was a miss. And then there's uh, the bomber, which is a wonderless. And that missed as well. And then combat would continue until one of the sides is won, uh, like so. However, if there is a sea battle that takes place, let's move this back. Move these up into C zone 17. If there's a sea battle that takes place, offshore bombardment does not count. Uh, so, say, even if they bring those guys along into Egypt and move those guys from Libya into Egypt, this battleship would have to conduct the combat first uh, and uh, kill it, and then the guys would be uh, loaded off onto the land. If this ship wasn't here, uh, then offshore bombardment could take place uh, for it uh, coming off. Uh, say uh, for some reason they only bring one guy into Egypt, but they also bring their cruiser over. So now there's a battleship and a cruiser. Only one of those would get a chance to uh, bombard against Egypt since they only brought one unit in. Uh, it's a one to one ratio, so if they bring two units uh, from uh, an amphibious assault, then two bombardments can be take place, if or up to two. If there was just that, then that would only be one bombardment. And this is a common uh, first thing. This is kind of how it's set up down here around Egypt. Uh, they usually take those guys from Italy, and uh, the guys from Libya. And that could be a common thing that would be done in that sea zone. Let's go ahead and move that back because boats do not go on land. Uh, a couple things that can also prevent it. So subs can submerge if the Russians bring this down from sea zone 4. Uh, or if they build another one, obviously. And the Germans decide to come on up and attack. And they bring all these guys from Germany uh, onto there. They can bring all... The bomber in and their fighters. Uh, if the sub chooses to submerge, uh, then the offshore bombardment would take place since there wouldn't be any combat. Uh, if it doesn't choose to submerge, combat would take place until one is victorious. Or, or victorious. There we go. That was a weird word. Uh, going to another example here in India, we have a transport in C Zone 35 and if Japan brings their fleet in uh, to do an amphibious assault, bombardment would not take place since there would be combat in order to destroy uh, this transport. However, they could take their plane and fly it off into India as well. Uh, knocking on, knocking over the guys currently. Oh well, they could do that. Uh, however, offshore bombardment wouldn't take place. I uh, down here. Uh, in Australia, if they if 
Japanese bring their forces over here and move those forces up and bring that. A bombardment would not take place since there was not an amphibious assault. Uh, but say there was a transport here, and technically you could load these guys on a transport and move on on over. And then bombardment would be able to take place since there was an amphibious assault. Okay, now on to a big battle. So the United States is attacking two territories, having two amphibious assaults in the same sea zone. Uh, so in this Chinese territory right here, not pronouncing that, and the territory with Shanghai in it uh, would also be another territory they would do. So uh, they have to dedicate transports to certain battles. So there's four transports in total, so they could bring those guys up like that and they could also bring those guys up like that there's not a sea battle so offshore and bombardment could take place I'm just gonna bring out all the ships that are able to bombard so we have all the cruisers and all the battleships so there's five in total however they can't all go to the same battle so they can't all go for the territory with Shanghai in it four could go Four bombardments could go for it since there's four units being offloaded or four could go to here uh, but it would have to be split up maybe three and two maybe four and one uh, I guess that's that's the only combinations that there are uh, if they chose to deliver uh, the one of these transports over here instead and just uh, do an inventory what that ship would be and a tank that would be valid and then all five of these ships could bombard Shanghai. This fighter uh, can also fly in and help out. Destroyers and subs, uh, as well as uh, aircraft carriers, cannot bombard. So those would not take part in the battle. Uh, so you can divide it up. Uh, if there is a sea battle again, uh, offshore bombardment does not take place. So hopefully this helped you out uh, with understanding this rule. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them inside the comments or any suggestions on uh, anything I should do. Uh, you can also leave them inside the comments. That's about it. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.